Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith and uh, I'm standing at, in front of the beautiful Hogsback Falls in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I'm going to throw some numbers at you today about the uh, coronavirus. So April 3rd, the world had went over, the world had 1,097,909 cases of coronavirus. The USA had 276,995 cases. So to get the rest of the world apart from the US, just subtract the USA from those world numbers and you get 820,914 cases. Now, if you want to do the ratio of the U.S. to the rest of the world, you divide that 276,995 by 820,914, and that gives you 33.7%. So the U.S. versus oh, the U.S. divided by the rest of the world, that ratio is 0.337, 33.7%. Now, I'm expecting that because the growth in the U.S. is so much higher, you know, the rest of the world is going ex up exponentially, but, the, uh, but not at the s same rate that the U.S. is going up. The exponential rate of the U.S. is even higher. So I'm arguing that it is very conceivable that in the next little while, we'll see the U.S. cases exceed those in the cumulative rest of the world. So when that ratio gets to um, when the US cases match the rest of the world cases that ratio I just gave you will be a hundred percent it's 33.7 percent another way you can look at it is you can look at the percentage of the US versus the total world including itself so that would be 276 995 divided by 1 million nine hundred ninety seven thousand nine hundred and nine and that ratio gives you 0.2523 or 25.23 percent. So um, when that ratio gets up to 50 percent, then that means the, the U.S. numbers will be um, matching those of the entire rest of the world. So MAGI, MAGA, Make American Great Again, we can, we have a new, a new acronym. It's MAGI, M-A-G-I instead of M-A-G-A, a. So MAGI, M-A-G-I, is make America gravely ill. Okay, make America gravely ill. And that is what Trump is doing. You know, his incompetence at the rudder of the U.S. political system for many years, his ignorance, his hubris, his, um, you know, his narcissism, all of the rest. He is a very, very dangerous man. Now, in Ontario, the numbers for Ontario have come out recently, and uh, in Ontario, doing nothing, the death rate over the next two years, the Ontario government has come out with a projection and said it would be 100,000 people doing nothing over the next two years. The actions that they've taken already, they say that the numbers will be reduced to between 3,000 and 15,000 deaths over the next two years. So you can say that because of the actions they've been taken, you know, they're saving um, a huge number of lives, 100,000 minus 15,000 or 85,000 lives um, at the uh, worst case of 15,000 deaths. So let's take Trump's numbers and let's do them the other way around. Okay, so I haven't crunched all of the numbers, but this because uh, it's still early, early stages, but I'll, have, I'll try to do that to, because I'd like to come up with a number that uh, shows the number of deaths that Trump is directly resulting in from his ignorance and lack of decent policies and all of the misinformation and lies that he has said. You know, we had time to prepare for this thing. We saw it in China. We knew there was people could have um, people could carry the virus and have no symptoms for two weeks. So, you know, how does the country stop that? It's very difficult to stop that, but we had all this time to prepare and it was frittered away in many countries, none more so than the U.S. So, and then Trump's subsequent actions, 
we could put a direct uh, death toll on those numbers. And, and over time, I mean, the U.S. is in terrible trouble, much worse shape than just about any other country in the rest of the world. So doing a reverse study to what Ontario did, um, we could say that um, Trump could, that the casualties from coronavirus could have been X when instead they're Y because of Trump policies. And I would like to see, you know, have a running total of those numbers over time and, and uh, you know, see if Trump's numbers, you know, we know that Hitler was responsible for the deaths of six million uh, Jewish people in World War II. Okay, so I'd like to see if Trump numbers can, can uh, you know, if we're talking about millions upon millions upon millions of U.S. deaths, I'd like to see the scientific numbers saying that Trump is directly responsible for X millions of deaths. And, uh, you know, let's see if his number, uh, we could do a, a, a Trump versus Hitler uh, comparison. I mean, that's the, the, the dire truth. So that was the April 3rd numbers. Now, the April 4th numbers I had a look at. Um, the global case was 1,134,418 cases with coronavirus, 278,458 in the U.S. So taking the difference of those, 855,960, and then looking at those two ratios, the ratio of U.S. cases to cases in the rest of the world is 32.5 percent, which is a slight drop from the 33.7, and the, the percentage of world cases versus the total in the world, U.S. cases versus total in the world cases, was 24.5%, a drop from 25.23%. Okay, so that those numbers, now I was surprised at those numbers, so I redid them today. There will be day-to-day -day fluctuations. So basically, the numbers um, on April 5th. Okay, so I redid the numbers. I'm switching hands because my, uh, my, my, my right hand is trying to hold this camera steady. Okay, that's better. Um, left hand turn now. Um, my legs are a bit tired. My arms are perfectly fine because of my uh, bike yesterday. I bought a bike a week ago and I did a couple 25 kilometer runs, 15 mile runs, um, as practice for yesterday when I biked to Fitzroy Harbor from Ottawa. And that bike was a hunt, you know, the round trip was 114. 0.4 kilometers or 71.2 miles so my uh, legs are feeling it um, they're actually better today than I thought they would be because my son said make sure you massage your legs your sore muscles to get that lactic acid out you know and soak in I soaked in the bath hot bath for uh, you know an hour or so and uh, yeah I think that helped a lot in reducing my uh, the after effects of my uh, my bike yesterday trying to get into great shape Okay, so the April 5th numbers, and this is from the Johns Hopkins coronavirus map. Google it if you um, don't know what I'm talking about. My left hand is just not as steady. Right hand should be okay again. Okay, right hand, of course, is much stronger. Yeah, um, if you're right-handed. Okay, so the April 5th numbers at 2.30 p.m., I just checked. The global world cases of people infected by the coronavirus is 1,252,265. The U.S. numbers have skyrocketed to 325,185. The difference between those two numbers, so the number of non-U.S. cases in the world is 927,080. So now I'll do those two ratios. The ratio of U.S. cases to rest of the world is 325,185 divided by 927,080. That's 35.07 percent. Okay, when that number gets up to 50, up to uh, 100 percent, then the U.S. cases will match that in the rest of the world. I'm expecting that to happen fairly soon. You know, maybe in a, within a couple of weeks. Um, and this is, ha this is because the U.S. growth of the number of people getting diagnosed or in with getting infected by the coronavirus is much, much fa faster in the U.S. than 
it is anywhere else when, than, than you, when you compare it to the rest of the world. Um, so that number uh, originally on April 3rd was 33.7 percent and then it jumped then it decreased to 32.5 percent and now it's up to 35.07 percent. There will be fluctuation like I say, when that number gets to 100, then the number of cases in the U.S. will equal the number of cases in all the other countries combined in the rest of the world. Now, if you take the U.S. cases, uh, if you take the ratio of the U.S. cases to the total in the world, that's 325, 185 to 1252, 265, and that's 25.97%. So the, the U.S. cases are versus over the total cases is the 25.97%. And uh, on April uh, 3rd, that number was 25.23, and then it dropped to 24.5 on April 4th. So I'm tracking those numbers. You can do it yourself very easily. Um, when that ratio gets to 50%, then that will mean that the US cases will match that of the rest of the world. So, so this is what we have with, uh, you know, with the U.S. government, the incompetence of the U.S. government, and uh, you know, think of all of the quotes and things, all of the things that Trump has been saying about, oh, I don't want to let the people get off the cruise ship because that'll make the numbers too high. When it was 200, and would have gone to 400, and you know, when one case happened, he said, oh, we've got it under control. It'll be ending in a week. The guy, the guy is totally, he's totally separated from reality. You know how the U.S. people are letting one guy completely devastate and destroy their country is beyond me. You know, if I didn't know better, I would say that, uh, you know, Trump's objective, his goal is to destroy the, his own country. And uh, people are letting him get away with it. You know, what, what a crazy world we live in. Um, they need to get the guy, I, they, they, they need to put him in a room and say, sorry, you know, you, you're, you've lost all your powers you know, you're not president anymore. We have a crisis that we have to deal with that we don't like what you're doing. And, you know, that's, that would be the end of it. You know, we could actually get strong action being done. So anyway, um, yeah, so the U.S. Uh, so the U.S. numbers, you know, it, it's, it, it's crazy. I'm projecting that um, very, very soon, maybe in a couple weeks, less than a month you know if the trends if the present trends continue because of the exponential growth rate being much much higher in the US compared to the rest of the world I'm expecting that half of the cases um, that are reported in the world will be will be from the US soon um, and the numbers uh, right now are that that percentage right now is 25.97 percent if you compare U.S. to the total world, if you compare U.S. to the rest of the world, you know, those numbers will become, uh, when the U.S. is half of the rest of the world, those numbers, that ratio will be, uh, will be at uh, uh, 50 percent. So, so anyway, uh, thank you for listening and, uh, you know, make sure you're doing the social distancing. Um, and I'll talk a couple of, uh, about a couple of other things here. Uh, basically, um, you know, basically masks are very important. You know, I think the science has always been there, but it's become even clearer and clearer. You know, masks are very important. I'm out, I'm outside an awful lot. I try to spend about half my time outside. The, the, the key thing is social distancing. You don't go near anybody else, okay? And uh, I'm cognizant when I'm outside, I'm always trying to stand upwind. If there's anybody else, you know, if I'm, there's people nearby, I try to stand upwind. So the wind is blowing towards me. I'm not getting wind that, that passes a person and comes towards me. Um, you know, the idea of staying inside, I mean, the messaging to people is stay inside. You know, um, the messaging, what they really mean is you can't go near anybody else. Like, like you're not going to pick up the virus being outside, right? Uh, you know, any virus particles are going to be greatly uh, dispersed in the air. Okay, um, 